Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Noved Player, and welcome to episode 32 of the Noved Notes podcast. Welcome to Spooky Month. It's the first Saturday episode of October, and with me today, I actually have one of the, in my opinion, one of the biggest influencers when it comes to the <laughs> horror genre, uh, not only on VR, but across YouTube as well. We have Mr. Creepypasta. H how you doing hey, today? Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm doing good. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is really awesome to be a part of a VR podcast. I've never been in one. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's a it's a it's a blessing to have you on. Um, so I guess you know, first and foremost, you know, for the general listening audience, who is Mister Creepy Pasta? Uh, Mister Creepy Pasta is me. I do scary stories. I basically do like free audiobooks in a way uh, that are available on on YouTube and Spotify, places you can be able to get podcasts and things like that. Uh, I've been telling like Creepy Pasta stories online, which are like kind of stories that were. Uh, shared around kind of like urban legends were back in the day uh, on across the internet usually ones that are copied and pasted around like different forms and stuff uh, it's already like started out but like now it's kind of more just unpublished self-published authors these are like their, their kind of stories they get around hell yeah hell yeah so i guess first and foremost right so you you've been around youtube for god pretty long time now i would say it's definitely been over yeah, a, over 13, a decade now. 14 years yeah yeah was... <laughs> yeah it's definitely over 10 years <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was gonna say so you know what kind of got you started in the whole like voice narration you know with uh horror stories and creepypastas in general uh well so like i was one of the first uh people to do like voice recording stories on YouTube. There was a few others that like came before me that all did really short form. Everything they did was very like four minutes to five minutes shorts, uh, which I think like they they did a really fantastic job with like making those the short amount of time really spooky. Like I even like really struggle with that now. Um, but like it was like a really odd choice to do voice over a primarily visual medium. Uh, but like I was in college at the time. I was really into radio dramas at the time and things like that. And I was really into the um, Creepypasta website, creepypasta.com. Uh, so I was, I think at the time, the creepypasta.com website was talk was going to be bought by somebody else. It's been like bought so many times since then. But like at the time, the forums that they used to have, they don't have any more, were all talking about like, oh, everything's going to get bought. It's going to get deleted. Everything's going to change. Um, so I was saying like, well, I'm going to go ahead and try making like this radio show on YouTube. Um, and I'll try to like keep all these things, all these stories alive by just recording them into like an audio thing. Uh, like it was never like meant to be anything like big or anything successful. It was just supposed to be like a thing for me to kind of do. Um, and like a lot of people seem to like really like it. Like I was going through like some really like tough times then. Uh, cause like I did stuff, I think maybe like four or five videos. And then, like, I was like, well, I'm going to go ahead and, like, like, I'm not doing anything with it. Nobody really watches these. Um, but then some comments started rolling in. Like, when I was going through, like, this rough time, like, I looked at the comments and people were saying, so like, oh, where did you go? Oh, like, I thought you were going to make some more videos. Like, you're going to post something else. Uh, and then, like, I, I immediately was like, well, I mean, if they liked it, I might as well try something. I'll post another video. I'll post another video and it just seemed to like really take off there people were like liking it people were happy that i was doing it so i just kept doing it <laughs> i'm here hell yeah no that's that's what's up i would say you know you know kind of to go a little bit deeper into the whole you know creepypasta thing because they, there's so many different types of you know creepypastas out there but i guess to yeah. kind of be a little bit more uh, simple for maybe some people who don't know, um, what exactly are creepy pastas? Uh, well, I guess they're like short horror stories. They've gotten more like long form now than they used to. Uh, they used to be like like those those four to five minute shorts. I think was kind of it. And then like um, they started exploding in size when people started really creating creepy pasta monsters. So, like, back in the day, if you used to get those, like, chain emails, there were things like, oh, if you don't send this email to five other people, then, like, a girl who drowned in a river will, like, show up at the, in your house and, like, she's, she's going to get you. Uh, uh, Pasta things used to be like that. Like, I think uh, a lot of them kind of stem from that. And then they started being posted to forums where people would come up with more 
ideas to these stories like oh yeah there's this creature that like is in your bed and it watches you when you sleep and things like that uh and then as these kind of creature ideas grew and grew people started like giving them names and doing more designs for them so you get characters like slender man or Jeff the Killer, or uh, the Rake, and things like that, and they become a lot more established. And as they become more established, I think their stories ended up growing longer, growing bigger. Uh, so you end up getting a lot of those. Now I'd say, like, I don't even really do a lot of monster stories anymore. I think those creature feature stories are really cool, um, but they're really kind of, like, hard to come by ones that I feel are actually scary, or ones that really tell a good story. A lot of people are kind of focused more on, like, the design of the monsters than they are the story that kind of goes along with them. So, um, now a lot of the stories that I do, or a lot of creepypasta stories I do, come from, like, No Sleep, Reddit No Sleep, uh, where people are kind of just trying to tell, like, an experience story, uh, that's really scary, as opposed to, like, telling a story about a monster like the old creepypastas used to be. I, I still call what I do creepypastas. I'm not too sure if it's, like, considered to be creepypastas anymore. I think what I kind of do is just horror audiobooks, short-form horror audiobooks. Um, but, like, that that's... I still call them creepypastas. Creepypastas is still, like, a term that's close to me. It's associated with me. So, I, I, I call everything I do creepypastas, even though I don't... I don't know if that's the right word for them anymore. Fair. I, I was going to say, you know, because li like you said, there is, you know, so many different ones when it comes to like, you know, the old versions to like more modern culture related ones. Uh, so I guess I got to ask, in, in your opinion, like, what is like, what is your favorite or like most, most favorite creepypasta if, if you have one? Uh, uh, <laughs> I have a hard time with that because, like, I like, on my channel, I have like 3,600 some odd stories that I've done. So, like, being like, out of all of them that you've done in like the past 14 years, how, which one, like, or it's top really hard for me to pick ones that, like, yeah, okay, I can do a top. I, I'll say Tales from the Gas Station is definitely one of the ones I think of my favorite ones. Tales from the Gas Station is probably the most popular one that I have on my channel outside of like Creepypasta Monsters, like Jeff the Killer and stuff. That one, I think, is a fantastic story. The author is really cool because he lets me do a lot of uh, character voices that I don't normally get to do for horror stories. It's like a comedy horror series. So, like, there's, like, characters who have, like, very just strange names, like, very strange characters. Like, there's an egg-shaped woman that's able to, like, tell somebody's fortune. So I, uh, yeah, now that I could just tell you, I gotta get you hand, I gotta tell you fortune. I get to do these weird-ass fucking voices that I would never do in any other story. And if I did, like, they'd probably be really laughed at. Uh, but, like, he wants it to be comedic, so he lets me do it. One of the other characters who lets me do just Larry the Cable Guy for it. And, like, uh, that, that series itself blew up so big. I, I did, um... Four audiobooks, uh, like actual audiobooks for him that are available on Audible, uh, because like that that series was just so ginormous and it really sold like really well for him. I'm really glad about that too. Uh, that one was definitely one of the favorite ones because of like my ability to like mess around with the characters. Um, there's a series on there called Baraska and Baraska V. I think those are really good too. Uh, just like I was saying, like stretching my legs and being able to do acting things. Uh, it's really nice, and Baraska and Baraska V lets me do that almost like in the inverse way that Tales from the Gas Station did. Um, because in Baraska, I got to do play another, a lot of characters, but all of them had to be very real. Because it was a really kind of uh, raw, realistic kind of horror scenario that was going on in that story. So all the characters are really, I had to be real characters, and what was really cool is like... As as the main character is telling the story through each part, he's growing older. So my voice has to also age along with him so that it's a more of a of a natural thing. Uh, I think that was a really fun story to do because of that. I got to age up the characters, imagine how they'd look, what they're going through in life and things like that, what they would sound like when they get older. Uh, and I, I think my performance in that's pretty good. I'll leave that up to you guys to determine if you think that performance <laughs> is good. But I liked it. Uh... Then, like, I don't know. There's some characters I just really love to play. Jeff the Killer, I think, is one character I really love to play. And I know his story. A lot of people don't like his story. Um, but I think anytime I get a chance to be Jeff the Killer, like, if it's in, like, a collaboration with another person's, like, video or something like that, they're like, oh, we need somebody to play Jeff. I'm like, yes, I'll be in there. I want to play a Jeff the Killer. I want to be a really angry teenager. And I want to be able to really, like, yell at people and, like, play the whole slasher villain thing. That's so fun for me. <laughs> those, are, those are a couple of my favorite ones. But I'm sure I've other ones in there. Those are just the ones that, like, really stick out to me. Whenever anybody asks or talks about them, those are the ones everybody talks about. No, fair enough. I, I was going to say, yeah, because uh, 
there's there's a lot as you as you said to yourself you know you said there's yeah. over <laughs> you know three thousand different stories you've done um but definitely a good like vast variety of different stuff so that's that's cool to say at least like, you know you like a bunch of different <laughs> styles that's that's really cool oh, uh, absolutely. but yeah so I, I was gonna say so kind of to go on the opposite end of that spectrum what's like one of the most like weirdest ones you've ever read it doesn't have to be like the worst one but like what what's what's like a yeah. memorable what's like the, a memorable one that you're like man that was just weird <sighs> <laughs> it was just weird. Uh, yeah, cause I don't like saying like which ones I think are bad. I don't think like there's people who have not like developed their writing skills yet, and that's fine. But there's like I don't like saying the stories are bad. Weird though, definitely. I have had weird stories. <laughs> there is some very strange stories that I've had on there. Uh, there was one I remember that was uh, there was a story about this. I want to say it was like a stump. I don't remember exactly what the monster was, but it's like it was a monster this guy sees when he goes when he goes running, and um, he, when he sees this monster, um, he pees himself, <laughs> and uh, the monster becomes really obsessed with the fact that he peed himself. Uh, like I think like the monster is like talking about like smelling the pee and like chasing him to catch the pee and whatever. And I remember <laughs> I think I think I was paid to do this. I think this was an audiobook I did. Uh, and this is one of the stories. And that was just the strangest because I I'm still have to be in character with the little monster. Oh, yeah. And like but he still has to be talking about <laughs> pee this whole time. And it was the strangest thing. And I think that was like such an offshoot. The rest of the book was like fantastic. All these like really serious stories. And that one was in it. I think that was probably one of the weirdest ones because it just really stuck in there. Um, <laughs> and then one story, I will say, because I don't think anything ever came out of it. Um, there was a story that I was sent, a few of the other narrators, and also, also was sent the story. Um, it was a wrestling story. Like It was, it was a creepypasta, somebody tried to write about wrestlers. Okay. Um, and I remember, like, I don't even remember what happens in it. I think, like, just a wrestler dies or something, but, like, it was one sentence, and the sentence went on for something like 35 lines. <laughs> and I think that was probably one of the... What? I think, because I got the email. Yeah, I got the email. One of the other guys got an email, and sent me a message. Like, this is, like, back on Skype or something. It was like, hey, did you get that story? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I'm not going to do it. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to do this either. But that's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Like, this is almost a phenomenon, how this was written to be one <laughs> sentence long, and yet this that long of a story. So uh, those are probably some of the weirder ones. I know, like, there's there's a bunch of weird ones. I've done some weird ones on the, on the channel, for sure. There's um, there's some that are just guaranteed to be, like, crappy stories. Like, I, in October... I usually have one day dedicated to stories that are really, really bad. Um, they're intentionally written to be bad, so I don't, I'm not, I don't want to make fun of anybody's writing abilities or like, and they're developing their writing. But these are ones that are comedically written to be bad stories, um, and I have those up there. They get weird. They get really funny and really strange. <laughs> Fair enough. I was gonna say yeah, because. Uh... There's some, yeah, it's a, it's supposed to be meant to be like satirical in its own right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely an interesting one. Um, so, you know, I, in kind of regards to creepypasta monsters per se, um, because with how, with how big they've blown up over, you know, the, the course of like the start of creepypastas till let's say now in 2024, cause they're still popular. You know, whether, you know, whether you like to believe it or not, you know, it, it they're, yeah, they're, you see them on all sorts of mediums, whether it's, you know, indie development games or, you know, um, even like VR chat games, for example. Um, oh, yeah. You know, you got like Slash Co. VR, you have uh, Tears of Nowhere, um, all, all of those sorts of games that, you know, show showcase these characters in their own limelight. Um, so I, I guess, you know, out of curiosity, one, one of the things I wanted to ask, is there a particular one that involves like video game or movie culture that like sticks out the most, um, when it comes to like the storytelling side of things? Oh, with it, uh, like just when it comes down to creepypastas, are there any that stick to those? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean like, well, dude, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's was like such a big thing when it came down to crossing uh like visual video game and then even creepypasta mediums and stuff like that 
um the way that like the, i'll just say like fnaf in general like the storytelling that it does um is all like these hidden hidden things inside of the video game and that really affected a lot of how like baby postures ended up being written at that time and especially a lot of video game tie-ins because like i mean there's original like there's like uh pokemon creepypastas and things like that that have existed long 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 time ago um and they were all small things like oh there's like a haunted cartridge oh there's like hidden messages inside of games there's sounds and stuff that ends up killing people whenever they they hear it but um I think that was when when Five Nights at Freddy's came out. They really expanded and like exploded into all these other different kinds of games and TV shows, and movies that would all kind of have that same idea that there's something dark that happened in the past and like all these things are hidden throughout media and they they came out. I think that really affected things because like I'm not gonna lie, a lot of creepy pasta stuff kind of ends up being written by a lot of kids who just kind of wanted to have a first interest when it comes down to horror. So like creepy pasta stuff, I think yeah, creepy pastas. Um, um, really are uh, like a lot of stuff ends up written by like a lot of young people like a lot of kids and stuff and when five nights at freddy's came out it was a really big hit with kids kids fucking loved it they wanted to watch youtubers play five nights at freddy's they want to watch all these kinds of things that became a big introduction to horror for them like creepypasta becomes a big introduction to horror for a lot of uh, young people a lot of kids too so when they start writing and they want to make something new a lot of the experiences they they have from these like horror games or these kind of uh i even say like the five nights freddy's movie the the horror movie and the way that it affects the way that they perceive what horror is affects the stories that we end up getting later i've been doing this for like i said uh, what 14 years that's enough for like you know three generations of people to go from high school to college and that means that like the stories that i see come in come from people who were you know ends up being in their late teens to early 20s and the stories that i had started off with reading before are now the stories that come into me from like hey this is what i've been watching you since i was a kid here's things that i write now and i can definitely see the influences from things at that time things that really made them like creepypasta stuff from the beginning and then coming back into now and i really i i love that about like a lot of things i have like really unpopular opinions because i'm like yeah things that are fun and good and that everyone enjoys i love them i don't i don't really have like uh a big like ah oh, these new thing these new things suck they're not really as good as they used to be it's like <laughs> yeah i mean they're not as good because they don't get you as scared but like still new things that come in are scary to the people that are new to it and i think that's that's really cool <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. Uh, with that, right, you know, because that and that goes with anything, not just, you know, narrations and stories, you know, everything, yeah. everything changes with time and age. Um, it's getting to the point that I'm starting to, you know, show my age, because now it's getting to the point <laughs> to where like, there's, you know, kids younger than me, right? And they're saying like slang and I don't understand what the hell they're talking about. It's a finally, oh my God. it's finally, <laughs> no. hit that. it's finally hit that point in my life and I am not okay with it because I was like, yeah, I know, I know what, what that you means. Mean. And, you know, and it, it's gotten to the point like, bro, I, it's so weird because like as somebody who's born like <laughs> the late 90s, you know, I'm attuned to not only like semi newer stuff, but older stuff as well. Shoot, I sing barbershop, a 1920s genre of music for Christ's sake. Like <laughs> I I'm 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 good with old stuff and I'm good with like up to like 20, I don't know, 2022. But like the past two years, it's been weird. I'm like, it's just not the same. <laughs> it's 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 weird. Oh, dude, I, I don't understand it at all, but I do love brain rot memes from Gen Alpha. I don't understand at all what's happening, but yeah, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, no, like the some of the memes are great. Um uh, but like I Bro, I, I don't know. I, maybe I'm finally getting out of touch with, uh, I, I don't want to say society, <laughs> but with, with like the younger generations now. It's, it's weird. With the youth. Yeah, no, with, it's the with, kids who are wrong. <laughs> We're still in the right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you there's some younger viewers out there, but, you know, I'm uncultured. That's one of the run, on, run, ongoing <laughs> gags of the show. I'm uncultured. This is why I learn about many different types of things um, while doing this podcast. But so, um, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a, a lot different when it comes to, um, you know, the, the variety of storytelling. Um, so I guess, you know, one of the things that I wanted to ask you in regards to storytelling um, and narration, yeah. you know, it's because, you know, there's 
um, I actually do have some, you know, friends who do some narration stuff too. Uh, so one of the questions I wanted to ask you specifically, if you had a piece of advice, uh, for when it comes to like, you know, maybe new people who are getting into like narration or voice acting or, you know, anything of that caliber, you know, you've done it for so long. What's a piece of advice that you can give, you know, to like those type of people? Uh, um, I'd say <laughs> anybody who wants to get into voice acting, a lot of, um, a lot of people who want to get into voice acting know that they can do a lot of voices. Um, and that's, uh, that is a skill. And that's really cool that you can do a lot of voices. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I could do like Peter Griffin's voice. And like, yeah, that's really cool. That's nice that you can do Peter Griffin's voice. But like when you go through voice acting, I think the, the main takeaway for anybody who wants to get started in it or anybody that's starting to learn it or doing experiences is that you want to focus more on the acting side of it than you do on the voice side of it. Being able to do Peter Griffin's voice is cool. Uh, that's that's really cool that you can be able to do those kinds of um, those kinds of voices. But the acting side of it says that you're not really developing a voice; you're developing a character. And like I have about like five or six different characters that I play. And those of you guys who have seen my podcast or watched me on YouTube probably recognize a lot of these characters appear from story to story just because that character fits the role in that story uh, for the most part. So like like say like yeah, I want to do Peter Griffin, right? Uh, Peter Griffin is, and like, you don't put like a lot of thought in these things because like he's a very comedic, very jokey character. He doesn't go through these different things, but um, as Peter Griffin, like, yeah, you can make your jokes, which is like a key point to the character. But also, Peter does have points where he's sad. Peter does have points where he does get heartbroken. Peter does have points where he needs to be afraid. And all these, when you do a Peter Griffin voice, you usually only focus on the key bit of uh, what is the joke that I'm trying to tell. You don't focus too much on what does he sound like if he's heartbroken. What does he sound like if he is afraid to, to leave his house? What does he sound like when he becomes, you know, like so angry over something and he doesn't know how to like express it with words? Like these are all things that you think about when you're developing a character. Um, and when you want to be able to do a voice, when you want to do voice acting, and even just using your own speaking voice, um, these are the emotions you want to be able to tap into and you want to be able to convey with your voice to, um, over your recordings, over your narrations, over your, um, your VA roles and things like that. So whenever you want to do that one, I think anybody who wants to get into to doing VA stuff, uh, try to focus on that. Developing a character for your speaking voice. What do you sound like in each of these roles and then after you have your initial speaking voice uh take a look at what's the other character i want to play is he like a detective okay so we're going to give him an accent what does he sound like here is he married does he have a child what does he sound like if his child were to die what would he sound like in that scenario if he becomes like fired from his job is he very angry about it how would he sound if he's very fi if he's fired up and he's, he needs to be fired from his job is he yelling at somebody is he crying about it can he not express his emotions well and those are kind of that's the key thing to to focus on if you're starting. No, ab one thousand percent, absolutely. That's very, <laughs> very, very great advice. I shoot, I couldn't even think of anything better myself. That was you got me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess you know, kind of to go from the VA side into like the narration side. You know, what's you know, uh, I promise this is the last advice question. I promise. Um, <laughs> no, 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 you're good. Uh, maybe we'll see. We'll see how that goes once again. <laughs> but, um, you know, when it comes to narration side, since you've been doing it for, you know, since 2011, you know, what's, what's one of the piece of advice you can give for someone who maybe wants to do like more narrative type, you know, oh, storytelling? Man. I'm not like, I'm not like, I'm bad at it. Uh, <laughs> I I do things I do things the way that I feel I want to do them. Uh, everybody's voice is unique. I'll say that that is a major thing. Your speaking voice, the voices that you um, that you want to be able to narrate with, are all unique. So anybody who wants to try it, definitely give it a try because nobody sounds the way that you sound. That's a really key thing. That's a big thing. Um, whenever I do narrations, I usually have a style where. I act as the narrator, the first person narrator, something like that within that moment. So I have a tendency to overact in a lot of my stuff, but that's because I'm conveying the emotion that takes place in that scene at that time. I want you to feel like you're in that scene. Now, if you're doing an audiobook, you're technically not supposed to do that. 
um, they usually want you to be flat, steady, the entire time that you're reading through an audiobook. You'll see a lot of narrators also on YouTube that do the same thing. They narrate in an audiobook style, which is flat, steady, and, and very clearly throughout the entire piece, which I think is also good. I mean, if that's the way that you want the story to be conveyed, that's a fantastic way of doing it. Um, really, I think like the big takeaway is like you know developing your own style and finding the way that you feel comfortable with the performance that you're giving is the way to do it. Um, but that that's very different amongst everybody, and it also I'll say is very different from what your audience what your audience will expect from. You. I think if I ever did a story that was flat and ran through it like an audiobook, I don't think my audience would like that. <laughs> because they've gotten very used to the way that I tell stories in my voice. Um, but that's not going to be true for everyone else. I know a couple of the other narrators that I work with even, um, they very much prefer to have a very deep, velvety voice, and they run through a story um, in a very like clear, clear manner. So you can hear everything, you can follow along very easily. They don't necessarily have a high end of emotion into that, but that works very well for their audience and a lot of people when they come from uh that narrator to me they're like what's with this guy what is he doing <laughs> he's talking way too quick i can't get it so like i i definitely know there's different styles but like i said i'm i'm bad at it when it comes to that i never went through like uh uh classes or training or things like that for for this um this is me trying to feel things out find out what my audience seems to like from me and then try to do more of that for them <laughs> No, fair. So it's more based off of passion rather than like uh, special, like like maybe some people went through like voice training and all that. It's you just do it based off of passion alone. If if from what it sounds oh, yeah. like, no, that's yeah, yeah. I never actually went like a school for for any kind of voice work. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Well, that's really cool, man. I, I was to say, you know, um, so obviously, you know, f for the people who are watching the video, you know, we are on vr so i guess you know kind of yeah. kind of to delve into you know that uh so what got you into vr chat in the first place oh man uh i didn't want to play vr chat for the longest time uh, <laughs> so i got super into vr like when it first was like a big thing that like you could purchase uh, in general like i think i have my vive the first vive when that one came out, um, I saved up money and I bought it, uh, which was really rough, let me tell you, because I just got married. <laughs> so, like, we didn't have a lot of extra money. And I was like, I'm just going to put money on the side. I just want to get this computer video game thing. Talking to my wife. Um, and she was like, all right, whatever you want to do. And I fell into it really hard. And uh, I really enjoyed virtual reality. There was a lot of virtual reality things to do, uh, experiences and stuff like that. VR chat, I always saw it was just like, Uganda knuckles and memes and like kids screaming. So I was like, I don't really want to play this game. It wasn't <laughs> until like 2017 or something like that that I was like, okay, uh, one of our friends was like going to play it. So I hopped in with him and it turned out really fun because we saw a lot of really cool things that I didn't know people were doing, like recreating video game areas and things like that in, in VR. Uh, and also the, the fact that you could create in VR, uh, I think was one of the big draws to me the fact that i could learn how to make my own worlds and characters and things like that was amazing um so i got really i got really into it from that point i started learning unity learning a lot of games game dev stuff that learned that i ended up learning uh using later like right now i uh i do development for my own horror games and things like that that you can find on itch but um that's all thanks to to VR chat because like uh, VR thanks to VR chat uh, VR chat SDK and stuff I was forced to learn C sharp I didn't want to but I was not forced to learn it uh, <laughs> which like helped me out being able to code in C sharp now um, but completely learning Blender and things like that these are things I never knew uh, I ended up learning after I turned thirty because it's just like well want to go ahead and learn new skills these are the new skills to learn. Uh, and seeing uh, the horror community that's actually here in VR uh, grow was like a really big thing too. When I joined in 2017, there was like maybe four people I knew of that were making horror maps at all. Now uh, there's so many people that do horror experiences and horror rides and horror maps and horror characters. It's really, really cool to be able to see what like those kinds of things are. And I mean, like outside of that, like I'm horror is not my entire life. I love horror. Horror is great. I like live and breathe horror movies. Absolutely. But I, I'm also like 
a huge Disney adult. Uh, so like putting together like uh, Disney stuff in here was really cool to see it. Like Disney Dreams was a passion project of mine for years. Like my baby of a world that I created. That's because like it's just the happy place for me, and I like I like going to it. I like being able to live and feel that that like Disney vibe and all that. So I mean, just down to that, it was so cool, dude. Like. I just I love being inside of like this world of pure creation. No, absolutely. And you actually said it best being, you know, the world, uh, you know, worlds of creation. Um, so, you know, one of the things really I'll, I'll go into what I was thinking. But since you brought up the whole Disney thing, um, something that I'll recommend you and anybody else, you know, that plays VR chat listening or watching, depending on the platform, uh, there is a new um I can't remember the name. I'll, I'll throw it up on the screen. Uh, but there's a new um, version. Somebody had recreated. Uh, you know, if you if you've been to Disney, you've you know at the very end of the night they have this whole light fireworks, fireworks. show. So yeah, so, so yeah. somebody had just made uh, a new version of that. Um, I can't remember what the title of it is. Um, it's I have it. I have one. I I know yeah, the one you're talking about. Yeah, it is really yeah, yeah. cool. <laughs> it is probably one of the most like immersive because I've seen a ver there was a version of it prior made by the same person and you can kind of tell it was like a giant video yeah. player this one like you can actually go up to it and you can kind of see like they actually put more depth to it and all sorts of stuff oh, that's cool. and it actually looks proper one of the things that i was reading about and i actually took my girlfriend uh for a date night uh i, I took her uh to to that world um because i had found i was like I, I really hope this one's good and i clicked on it and we went and it was a it was a solid 40 like 30 40 minutes and it was Oh, that's cool. Breathtaking. And I'm like, wow. Like, you know, granted, some of it was in French. Um, but yeah, yeah. overall, like, it was it was phenomenal. I actually no, I think that I think that one was full English. I I, I could be wrong. Ooh, I know, I know, okay. I know, I know one of them is in French, though. I don't remember if the newest one's in French or if it's in full English. But regardless, it was absolutely stunning. Um, like I said, I'll I'll throw it up on the screen. Um, but it's <laughs> um not not audio because you know copyright but you know i'll, I'll throw yeah, some yeah. visuals up there <laughs> but um but yeah so you know i, I guess one of the questions you know because you said you started in 2017 um you know yeah. so I, I guess one of the things i want to ask you know like i do anybody who's from that era of vr chat so what was one in your opinion what was one of like the best things when it came to like 2017 era vr chat Oh God, I I don't know. <laughs> my, my stuff is just all over the place. Dude. Or if there's like uh, a certain world or memory that you have, like from that era. No, I don't. I I I was not. So I'll tell you. When it came down to it, I didn't get big into community stuff until 2020. Mm. Um, because like I was just kind of feeling stuff around. Like I enjoyed being in VR, but like if I was, I was just there with my friends. We went to like I don't think it's here anymore. We went to like a. Of like little sickening, twisting, like carnival worlds and things like that. We hang out in the Dark Souls bonfire world uh, that was there, uh, but like, it, well, like we didn't really do like a whole lot when it came down to it. I think like I didn't even make my actual VR chat account account until probably like a year or so later. Um, I, I think we all just playing just randomly off Steam. I didn't realize there was other stuff to be able to do with it. Back in, when it hit 2020, that was when um, I was really in VR a lot. Because what, what else were we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> we were locked right. up at home and things like that. So, <laughs> is that or, an, that or Animal Crossing? So was, yeah, for real. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, I was there. I was in VR with my friends and stuff like that. That's where like, we were really like, well, let's find other things that are going on. Uh, VRC events and things like that was we were going to to just see like what people are posting and what... Uh, what kind of like things we found like VRC travelers and a whole bunch of other shows and stuff we would go see. And that, that's what we really started. Like, I think getting deep into like what VR chat is or who the other people are in VR chat. Otherwise we all just kind of used it as like a, just a discord. Essentially people log in, my friends log in, we hang out and that was it. We don't really see other people. My friends list didn't expand until uh, we started doing horror con stuff. And then like, I actually started getting to know people outside of my own group. Whoa, what are you doing here? This is wild. <laughs> what are you doing here? I was here to remind these guys of something. 
What are you doing? Yeah, what are you going to remind them about, Lion? I wanted to remind them about something, too. <laughs> By the way, if you did you have fun at PJKT or VCAT this year? Is there another convention that you're looking for, but it's kind of not the season? Well, there's one co- coming up for Halloween that would be definitely down your alley if you're into spooky, scary stuff as well, which is HorrorCon, which is October 26th and 27th this year. So you should definitely go. You see booze, people make stuff here in VR. Lots of crazy stuff for you to go check out. There's also going to be DJs as well as many different worlds and events from panels to amazing things along the way. You'll have to check it out. It is a two-day event, like Lion said, October 26th and 27th. Make sure to be there. Go down in the description, discord.gg slash pjkt, and also HorrorCon's Discord will also be down there as well. Go check it out. It'll be an amazing time. You'll probably see us there. There's a lot of amazing people from horror creators to world creators of the horror genre, all sorts of stuff. You don't want to miss it. Not at all. Go down the description. Everything you need to know to find out where to go to attend is right down below in the hoobly what's the thingy down there. So sorry to interrupt your current viewing pleasure. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of whoever the guest is at this moment. I don't know who it is. There's a lot. There's going to be a lot. <laughs> we'll see you at HorrorCon. Woo! See you at HorrorCon. No, absolutely. And, you know, kind of speaking into that now, uh, good good segue. Um, so, you know, <laughs> uh, so as you've been doing this for many, you know, many years now, um, you know, you, you created HorrorCon. So, you know, for the general listening audience, and granted, by now, they've already just seen uh, the uh, <laughs> the teaser trailer um that me great me. performance by the way <laughs> fantastic <laughs> thank you well that's not the one i was referring to uh but yeah about f- about three four minutes ago uh there was a little advert where me and another podcaster we were promoting horicon um which nobody's seen yet but they probably just saw it in a little bit but um <laughs> But okay. yeah, but yeah. So I was gonna say in that regard. Um, so for the general listening audience at home, uh, what what exactly is Horicon VR? Uh, so Horicon VR was originally a convention we just put together. We it was only gonna be one year. It was supposed to be just for 2020. Um, so what happened was there's a lot of horror conventions and anime conventions I go to throughout the year. Um, like just doing mcp stuff and um there couldn't be any that took place in 2020 i think i was talking about how much i missed doing convention work and much how much i missed being able to like meet other people so um what i considered doing was just creating my own convention in virtual reality because like i said we had been learning to create stuff for, for vr um and i kind of posed it as a joke on twitter and i was like hey uh what if we did something like this ha 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 and um uh, miss mad hat who was somebody who uh was doing stuff for me at the time she was scouting stories for me she just sends me a message is like hey if you want to do that i will organize it i was like oh well that is the part i don't like so uh, <laughs> we just started talking about it and um it was them and meta touring who had handled our uh our tour we did across america uh in 2019 uh basically both got on board and they were like yeah we'd love to be able to do stuff together so we pulled together a convention space um very very (laughs) sloppily as much as we could since we'd never done a convention before uh, we put together a convention space in 2020. It was just Horicon VR. The idea was to get like a bunch of the people that I work with outside of virtual reality to get into virtual reality and um, try meeting other people in VR, showing what they do outside of VR, and getting people in VR to kind of branch out from there to, to find new horror aspects. Since at the time, there really wasn't a whole lot of horror in, in, horror, in VR chat at the time. So... Um, I think it was a really big success. We had a lot of artists who wanted to be there. Uh, We got a couple of different companies that showed up as well, showing off what they do, games they were developing, a bunch of YouTubers and authors and things like that, showing off their um, horror content that they create and things. It was really fun. I met a lot of my friends I have in VR chat now doing that. Um, And then, like, the next year, I think it was really fun. So, like, the guys who were working on it were like, yeah, we could do it again. We could do it again. And uh, we started working on it the second year, third year. Uh, by the third year, I think, we had lost a lot of the people who were working on it. And it was just me and General Drowned. 
working and it became this really big nightmare uh of trying to put this whole thing together especially with life happening in like this whirlwind around us so i think it was after the third year we were deciding we weren't going to do it anymore until project came along and project messaged us letting us know like hey uh we know this has been a hard hard time for you so uh, we want to be able to help out and make it not hard and that totally changed our view on running Horicon again because like oh my god it made everything like wonderful it was so smooth to be able to run it it was no longer like a horrible stress on us because like clearly like it october is when we we run Horicon. um Horicon, like you guys probably saw is happening at the end of october october is also an incredibly stressful time for me because <laughs> i have to do uh halloween for my channel i have to do live halloween content and also um me and my wife in our actual house here we always become the haunted house for the neighborhood so <laughs> yeah i have to plot build and everything haunted house uh within that last week so it becomes incredibly incredibly stressful uh, for me to try to do all these plates spinning at the same time. Project Take coming in to do Horicon uh, along with us has been like, oh my god, such a freeing experience, because like the the experience that you guys have when it comes down to doing this is like, unmatched. When it comes down to working in VR, you guys know exactly what you're doing. It comes out <laughs> to being able to find uh, like horror content creators and things like that and reaching out outside of VR I feel like is really good for like me in general, because we've been doing it for so many years and it comes together in such a really great way. For you guys out there who were uh, watching in virtual reality or, or use virtual reality, if you guys check out Horrorcon VR because you want to see new stuff that's happening in VR when it comes down to horror, or you, if you're using VR already and you want to see stuff outside of VR when it comes down to horror, that's a great place for you to be able to come to and meet people who like horror or like Halloween and um, find uh, find new friendships, find new communities, and find new groups. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I was going to say, you know, definitely, definitely have to give it the main props when it comes to um, the PJKT side of Horicon. I have to give it to like Carrot and Pesky for the world design. Like they do oh, yeah. phenomenal stuff. Um, like if you if you haven't seen 2023 Horicon, highly recommend checking that out. Um, you know, I was going to say in that regard or really any any of the Horicon maps, because there are so many different maps you know scare <laughs> maps all sorts of some of them may be busted because you know unity switches and you know vrc sdk oh, yeah it, it happens it like a lot of maps on vr chat if they're older than you know two years it happens um but yeah um but yeah no i'll say it definitely horicon has definitely evolved uh since it's you know little humble beginnings uh starting out and oh, for, yeah. the, for, for the better hands down um you know it because realistically it, it it's became more how do i phrase this it, it's became like more i guess immersive per se granted like yeah. you'll, you'll oh, have absolutely you'll have uh like you know i i remember one of the original horror con like memes that were around the ball pit and there was always yeah <laughs> <laughs> there was always something going on with a ball pit somewhere in the world <laughs> <laughs> if if you don't know what i'm that talking was... about go check out the world because <laughs> it, it's always something <laughs> In the in the first Horicon, we put the ball pit in because um, it was all joke. Like honestly, we kept joking around, like, "Oh yeah, the Horicon world evolves over so many times because we made mistakes and like there's like game breaking things in it. We had to like up upload a change in the middle of the convention, so it was like, oh, it evolves. It doesn't evolve. It, we we just kept making mistakes because we don't know what we're doing. Um, the ball pit was one thing we put in there because we were saying like the first year, especially like, oh, this is either going to be like really fun and there's a lot of people to go. Or oh, is it gonna be really shitty? We're the only ones who are gonna be there, so we gotta put the ball pit in to show like the the like really shitty side of it. And like, when one of the upload changes I had made on the last day is there's a there's a yellow pee stain in the bottom of the ball pit every time <laughs> on the last day of Horicon. Uh, so I, for, for three years, there's a ball pit that I'm pretty sure if you go to one of the old worlds now, if, it, if they still work, and you go to the ball pit, you put your head below the balls, you'll see there's a big yellow stain at the bottom of the ball pit. <laughs> in the air, everybody pees in the ball pit. But the ball pit was such a huge hit. The um, There's a couple of memes we always have at Horicon, and we keep putting them back in. One of them is the ball pit. The ball pit's been around since the beginning. Uh, the other one is the corpse dog. So there is a dog that's in the first Horicon map, if you find, uh, actually for the first three years, um, if you find him, he's around there, and uh, Corpse Husband 
did the uh, voice uh, for the dog for us. He's really cool. Uh, we've known him for a long time back since he used to do YouTube. And, like, I sent him a message, like, hey, I'm doing this. Uh, do you want to be a part of it? He's like, I can't. Like, clearly, like, there's a lot of logistics that comes down to him doing appearances. So um, I was like, what if I get, like, these lines for you? And then you could do them. He's like, okay, sure, yeah. So he just sends me the audio for these. So if you find the dog and you pet the dog, it will give you a line from Corp Husband saying something. But that that's another meme that we had, like, all the time. There's always the corpse dogs in there. There's always the... Um, there's always the ball pit that shows up inside of these places. I think that was even one of the things we talked to the project about this year was like, um, with our community, the memes have kind of become a big thing. And last year, I think we were, we had some jokes about the ball pit inside of the place. We never put the actual ball pit in there. Um, so we were, we had to talk like, yeah, the memes are a big part of our community. We'd love to be able to put the memes into the world if we could. So this year, if you guys keep your eyes open, Hopefully you'll see some of the uh, the horror con memes inside of the world this time. <laughs> Hopefully, no, I know, uh, I I know this year specifically, it's been definitely under wraps. Um, we know we know some basic plot points this time around. Um, first first and foremost, like even as even as PJKT staff, I don't know too much. I know general themes and general basis. and quite frankly, it's mm -hmm. for the be it's for the better. You know, it keeps that mystery aspect. It keeps the the uh, suspension suspension S suspense that's the word words are suspense. hard <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was trying, I was thinking suspicion and suspense i was like wait what's the word yeah it keeps the suspense <laughs> alive um you know because obviously yeah with uh you know the 2024 trailer that we had produced a project um which big yeah. shout out to volkashik and emma torch uh for you know getting the other parts down uh vol actually made like the set uh like th that entire oh, world really? was all made by her um the avatar that you know the sailor that was also made by her um i was say yeah Gosh, I'll say she, so she, she 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 rigged it together and you know got it working and she's like yep ego and i'm like okay cool and i i was <laughs> i was trying to mess around with a voice you know trying to like you honestly like kind of you said i was trying to give it a character rather than just doing a voice um you know it's it was it was hard because it was a very last minute type thing, um, you know, because we were we were ready to record and I was kind of messing around with like you know scruffy old sailor voices. And granted, as a uh, musician in I guess now technically voice actor, um, like it's it's very weird for me to hear my own voice and appreciate it like some people do really um yeah, oh, yeah absolutely as, as a me no, thing <laughs> like a lot of people appreciate like uh f just side tangent uh there was an event uh celebrating the anniversary of a vr chat community called coach no yakuza and uh i was invited as well as a few of my community and a few other communities across vr chat and they have this like hour-long uh like performance thing where p people from all over in the world you know can go up on stage and perform for the coach no yakuza and everyone that's there it's a whole ball like it's a whole gala ball experience and <laughs> um i was asked by uh the um one of the main like representatives of the community uh yuki she's like no but you got an amazing voice can you sing for everyone and i'm like oh uh i mm, was not prepared uh but <laughs> sure and i was like i i did a i did a cover of uh at the mtv unplugged version of take on me it's a more ballad-esque more slow like um yeah it's a super super beautiful piece um and i was like you know what i i did it with my quartet a while back i've done it a few times at karaoke you know I'm, i know the song well enough sure we'll do that and I, I, I shit you not, like, during the actual video, or during the actual performance, you could hear a pin drop. It was death silent. And I was like, I was like, oh, okay, like, I hope I'm doing good. And then I was getting complimented left and right. I'm like, in my head, I don't think that. You know, I just think, like, yeah. I'm, me I'm mediocre or stuff like that. And maybe it's self-esteem issues. There's a whole baggage list of stuff that it could be. But... <laughs> But I never give myself enough credit in that sense. But yeah, the, the point being, like, it, it's really weird for me to hear my own voice, um, you know, especially when it comes to like VA, because me personally, I can know I know it's me that's doing it. So it's kind of weird. 
um, I had some people, they didn't real they didn't even recognize it was me. I was like, really? It just sounds like me. They're like, not really. I'm <laughs> like, okay, cool. I guess I nailed that part, I guess. <laughs> like, it's really weird, you know? No, that's no, it's good to have like good feedback from people, dude. Like that that's like that's the best feeling is knowing that you've done something that like makes somebody else like happy with it or entertained with it. Like, oh, that's such a good feeling. So yeah, no, dude, you should be proud of the performance you gave. <laughs> like you did Thank really you. well with that sailor. Thank you. Um, so I guess kind of to go back a little bit into the topic. Um, so we were talking about the memes. So what brought on the the horror con skeleton that is now seen? Oh yeah. I forgot about him. <laughs> uh, I guess so. We we had looked up, tried to we tried to find an icon for it. Like this has been one of the first couple of meetings of Horicon. Um, with like in the first year, we tried to find an icon, and I had um looked up like a couple different things. I think like on like a PNG um what's the word like photo stock stock photo website. So we had found one that we were going to buy the rights to, uh, to be able to use, which is literally just a skull, like a skull with a VR headset. I think it's it's basically what we have now, but not not quite. Because I was going to buy the rights to it, and I showed it to the auth, the artist that I work with a lot of the times for, like MCP stuff and a lot of other things. And she was like, "Don't pay for that. Like, I could just make something like that, and then you could just use it." I was like, "Oh, that." also works <laughs> so she made a 3d model of the the skull and the headset uh that we use as the actual icon for the skull and the headset uh that's all red uh and then like all she later on made the avatar stuff for it uh which you can see at horicon usually there's the skull the skeleton with the thing uh there's the avatar that you can usually get also at horicon from the of the same thing um i ended up putting the avatar itself like like the effects and stuff so we could take the headset off uh and it became a very big again meme for us um because the second horicon is set in like this um i forget like icy location so we really wanted to take the design from the thing if you ever seen uh, the movie or the poster for it where it's like a man in a uh like a parka and there's like this big shine coming out of his head so if you've ever used the used the uh, Horicon thing in any world that has a large amount of bloom in it, and you take those the headset off, the eyes glow an ungodly level. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look so bad anywhere else, but if there's bloom in a world and those come off, they are like blindingly bright. And that became like a huge joke for us. Like at any point, we could take them off and like shine on somebody, and, like make them go blind in some worlds. Uh, that like. I think I wanted to fix it, and General was like, no, it's too funny. Keep it. So now he's just a broken-ass avatar that has, like, these crazy eyes on it. That's, that's really it. I think uh, Official Seon gave it some, like, story uh, when it comes down to the second the second uh, Horicon. Like, the alien world, if you guys... You guys could probably find Official Seon's alien world that he had to tie in. Uh, it was really cool we got a tie-in with him uh, for that, that year. Um, and that... One I think he called the Harbinger, and it's like a person who had all of his flesh like taken off of him, but he's kept alive inside of a tank. So like he could still talk to you and stuff as a skeleton, but he's like barely alive and he's just stripped of uh, of all of his skin and stuff. That was really cool. Uh, but like I don't think we ever really came up with a story for him. All of the stuff that me and Jen had always come out with for like any kind of story for Horicon had always been. Um, meant to be very mysterious so we intentionally made it broken we just wrote it like the series lost we'll just make it make sense later <laughs> fair no that, I mean, that's really cool regardless that you know you guys have made this character and it's gone so far with so many death to it um you know i would say it's it's definitely the icon for sure when it comes to like uh, oh yeah. What is what is seen at, you know with Horicon? It's always been that. That's why we had to include it with this year's trailer. Like we're like it wouldn't be right if we <laughs> didn't, you know. And yeah, I feel you. I was like, I have that avatar. Like, do, do we want to just like, you know, put it, make it to where like it's a giant creature just coming out of the thing? Like, you know, why not? And you know, who knows? It might be used in future uh, maybe opening and closing ceremony stuff. You have to you have to wait and see. That stuff's still being in development. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, 
it's definitely absolutely at least in my opinion it's definitely crazy how far uh horror con in general has grown um so definitely oh, yeah. definitely kudos in that regard um you know i know you said project was you know one to thank in that regard um oh, yeah. but regardless you are still you know keeping it alive by you know maintaining it to say the least um because realistically you could have been like eh, nah we're we're finally done or <laughs> something like that but you know at least you want to want it to keep going you know so that's oh yeah it's a good thing uh when it comes down to like a lot of stuff it comes down to like my youtube channel and everything else um uh, i think like just for the most part it's like making people happy <laughs> so the thing that kept us going with HorrorCon, even when it was like, oh, this is incredibly stressful, oh, like, we have a lot of other stuff going on, I don't know if we can do it. At the end of the day, like, the reason me and Jen kept doing it is because, like, a lot of people really like going. Um, and a lot of artists, especially, uh, really liked having their booth there. They really liked going to, or being a part of HorrorCon. So, uh, it, we just kept making it because people liked it. Um, and... The, when Project came along, like, to be able to help us with it, we were just so thankful for it because it just let us continue to make people happy. And that's what we want to do. <laughs> no, absolutely. So I guess kind of the, you know, um, for maybe those that have maybe been to HorrorCon in years past, or maybe those who have not, you know, is there something, and Carrot, I, if you ever see this, please don't fucking shoot me. Um, is it, <laughs> uh, from, from your POV, bes besides the world specifically, is there anything that you could potentially tease for HorrorCon 2024? Ah uh, no, <laughs> um, we have another tie. I'll say this: we, there's another, there's a, there's going to be another scare experience tie-in. I think that's a big thing for me is making sure that there's like a scare zone. Uh, everyone, uh, because I always loved the idea of any like real life horror horror convention I go to. There's always like a scare zone area where you go through and uh, either there's scare actors showing things off or new technology they're showing off for like haunted houses and stuff so for horicon i always want to make sure there is a scare zone whether it be big or small and i know that for a fact this year we do have another scare zone it is very nice uh it looks very good um, we have another creator actually who came in to make it so i will tease that <laughs> it's not really a tease because we've done it many times before but it is it is good this year <laughs> Hold on, run that back. You said, what was that part? <laughs> Make sure I heard that right. It's, it's not really a tease. We've had it in years past, but yeah, we have another creator coming in to make this scare zone. Fair enough. Um, I'll have to re-roll that back on my end because I heard something completely different. Um, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> a, I don't know what I heard, but I was like, what did you say? Um, but yeah, anyways, well, that's cool. I'm glad to see you guys are doing another scare zone again. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, because I know in years past they've been uh, very well received. Um, I know VR chat issues. It happens. It's VR chat. It always yeah. has issues. You can't oh blame. You cannot the blame the year, creators. The <laughs> you cannot blame the creators when it's <laughs> it's a VR chat issue. I, I'm just saying. I've seen it happen numerous times. Um, but uh, funny enough, um, I don't know if I'm going to spoil it yet, but I will say uh, somebody who Horicon has worked with in the past, I also, uh, we're supposed to be scheduling out an episode for later this month. Um, uh, he actually did hit me back up and he was like, yeah, I'd be down. Like what day? Um, so hopefully we'll get that figured out um, mm, okay. <laughs> as a little teaser for you. Um, because that was that was like my whole thing with the application. Because I was like, you know what? I don't technically do horror, but I'm gonna do horror this month just so I can at least like be like, hey, <laughs> here's my application. No, <laughs> but no. Um, <laughs> but uh, realistically, I, I with it being the first year of the podcast, I kind of wanted to make the first October horror related, and you know, yeah. Because realistically, right? And uh, there might be other holidays I might do. It's, I'm still a work in progress when it comes. Like I haven't even hit my first year on the podcast yet. 
and you know oh damn you're yeah. very good you're good you're hosting <laughs> podcast dude you're good <laughs> thank it's you a good show <laughs> <laughs> um yeah check will check will be on paypal later um but uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but no i, I say I'm, I'm very excited for this year's horror con in the sense of like um because i i know there's been a lot of people who are interested this time around um funny yeah. enough funny enough uh on the project community youtube channel i don't know if you know this it's act that 2024 horror con trailer is now our second most viewed vid on on project community really? yeah the oh, first one awesome the first one being uh the original one which is what is project community um but yeah that yeah. Yeah, it's it's been nuts. It's been very well received. A lot of people. I remember at Fest twenty four at the after parties, they were asking questions left and right. I was like, "Give us a week," because right now we we're like yeah. the, the staff needs a break. <laughs> like, and that goes for all of you out there. I know y'all are listening, <laughs> but um, but as of right now, um, as we're actually recording this, the signups have officially closed. Yes, as of tonight, closed yesterday yeah which would be september 12th for those uh you know because it's gonna be released on the first saturday of october september 12th is when they did close um you know so hopefully hopefully there'll be some word obviously there'll be word by the time you know this episode comes out but you know knock on knock on wood real quick um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i, I was gonna say because you you've you've had access to a lot of it i'll say uh, without kind of spoiling anything, because we don't want to, you know, spoil too much. How have have you seen any of the submissions or anything in that regard, or like? Oh, the submissions. Yes, the submissions I've seen. Yes, I was gonna say I haven't seen any of the world, so I don't know what the world's gonna be like. But I I've seen submissions for uh, for booths and panels. I know that we. I'll say we had to reorganize the panel schedule to allow for more people so oh wow that's it's it, it's a full schedule yeah awesome well that's cool like that's really cool that you're gonna yeah. have a full schedule out um yeah i was gonna say i don't i don't want to spoil too much because that ruins the whole fun of it but like stay excited because horicon 24 is gonna be yes. another as another memorable year just as always um you know so make sure to go check it out october 26th and 27th i remembered the dates this time let's go fun fact <laughs> fun fun no fun fact uh because we are running a little bit out of time but i'll go on this small tangent um so <laughs> fun good. fact uh on my ko-fi yeah i know it's a shameless plug but on my ko-fi there is footage uh, from my POV of the uh, trailer and I'm just messing up like left and right because uh, I was I was having issues remembering like certain parts of my lines and I'm like shit like like it's a lot of swearing it's mostly swearing but like <laughs> but um, but yeah I'll say as, as a as a part of uh, what what, what I want to do for this month uh, me and another podcast, Metaverse Degen, uh, we actually did make a collaboration, um, like ad reel to say the least, um, that we're both going to be using on ours. So instead of having like our normal, like, Hey, go subscribe to our stuff. We're gonna be like, nah, what are you doing here? No, what are you doing here? Oh, there's this amazing thing. I want to tell the people. Oh no, I want to tell the thing. And you know, we'll talk about like Horicon coming up and stuff like that. So you'll have to see it. It'll be, it'll be during the ad reel of, uh, this episode and any other October episodes, Hell but, yeah. but Look forward to it, but we're, we're very excited. Um, and I highly recommend. And if you're down, I'll, I'll send you their way too. Cause they're always down. They they've done this a lot longer than I have when it comes to podcasting. <laughs> sure thing, man. Um, that but, fun. but yeah, shout out lion and Raptor. Um, but, but yeah, no, I was going to say, you know, before we go, cause like I said, we are kind of running, uh, a little bit over time, actually, yeah. surprisingly. Um, it, this, first of all, this did not feel like an hour. This felt like 30 minutes tops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. So, first of all, you know, thank you so much for coming on. Um, this was an absolute blast, kind of getting to know you a little bit more. Because we've we've worked together to some avail, you know, when it comes to, yeah, you know, yeah. stuff. But we never we never got to, like, sit down and have this type of talk. So, it was, it was really cool to kind of get to know true, you a little yeah. bit more. 
Um, I know. Oh we met yeah, dude. Thanks for having me on. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I was say I know we met like Project Lens last year, and because uh, I was the editor for the 2023 uh, announcement trailer. Um, which yeah. first of all, your 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 compliments were too kind to me, bro. I was like, oh, bro, like if you you hit me with that friend request. I'm like, oh shit, bro. Like I, I'm not gonna lie, I, I fan <laughs> I, 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 I fanboyed a little bit. I was like, shit, man. Like it, it was it was a really wholesome moment. Um. Which, funny enough, that that moment, uh, that picture of us, I actually do have in my world, um, which I'll show you after the episode's over. But, uh, but yeah, so before we end it off, I do want to give you a chance to let the people know where they can find you, where they can find you, HorrorCon, all that stuff. Um, any links you want on screen in the description, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, oh, the, yeah. Floor, the floor is yours. <laughs> uh, you can find me on YouTube. I am Mr. Creepy Hosta. Uh, you'd also find my my uh, podcast, which is the exact same content, just pure audio, anywhere that you guys can find podcasts. Uh, it's Mr. Creepy Pasta's Story Time. If you guys are interested in Horrorcon, uh, you can follow us on Twitter, which is horror underscore VR. Awesome, man! You had that. You had that locked. <laughs> <laughs> not a, a, a lot. A lot of people. I have, to, I have to do the plug. Don't worry. Don't forget to, to hit that subscribe and hit that like and ring that bell. <laughs> <laughs> Doing my job for me. Well, you did forget one. <laughs> you did forget one. Which one? If you are interested in joining, uh, to um, you know, go check it out, uh, as well as you know, be there. Make sure to join the VR chat group. It is horror dot. 4016 for the VR chat group. Um, it's okay. It's on your head. That's how I saw it. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> completely forgot that bit. But yeah, go, go check out their Discord, their Twitter. Uh, all the links will be down in the description. So make sure to check that out, as well as Mr. Creepypasta's links. So go make sure to check out his stuff. Dude's been doing it for since 2011. Go check out his <laughs> shit. He's a legend when it comes to this shit. He, you can literally say you're one of the OGs. <laughs> like, I appreciate it. But but yeah, man. No, thank you once again for coming on this means the world to me and i i'm i know there's gonna be some people out here that are excited to see that you know uh you're you're talking about horror con and stuff um so i'm super thankful man thank you so much for coming it was a blast to say the least so thank you for coming yeah, on thanks thanks for having me on i really appreciate it thanks so much yeah of course um but with that ladies gentlemen ghouls and ghoulsettes everyone inside and outside the ballpark this has been episode 32 of the Nova Notes podcast. Uh, I want to thank you all so much for listening, watching, depending on what platform you're on. Um, if you did like some of the stuff that you heard or saw, you know, feel free to smack that like button, leave a comment down below. If you're, you know, if you're a fan of HorrorCon, tell us what was your favorite HorrorCon map and why. You know, there's there's quite a few of them now, you know, or tell us what you're excited for for 2024. You know, I guarantee, you know, Mr. Creepypasta will probably be down there, you know, checking out the comments. You know, you never know. <laughs> you never know. But yeah, I'll be there. Of course. But with that, if you did enjoy some of the stuff that you've seen, uh, you know, and you're coming back. Ooh, hello. But if you are coming back to check out some of the other episodes, why not hit that subscribe button? You're already coming back anyway. But with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching or listening, depending on the platform. We're on nine platforms now, by the way, if you haven't found that out. But Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Nobis Club.